of Tehuti, <laughs> that caduceus being called phase conjugation in physics. So that was just a little background story to give you a little sense of how important it is to understand this concept of what happens when waves meet from opposite directions and cause that implosive centripetal force. Now, before we apply that to hydrogen, I'd like to give you just a short introduction to, to, to tomorrow's lecture. Tomorrow's lecture is about how bioactive fields are created phase conjugate dielectrics, phase conjugate magnetics. In the, one of those cases, we are going to be talking about how we assemble the magnets to create a device that can theoretically take sewage water to drinking water in almost one pass. What we do know so far is we measured a 300% growth effect. Now it turns out that we array those magnets in an array where there are nine phase conjugate gaps lined up. And we learned how to do that because of the living nature of plasma. Plasma becomes alive when the electric fields nest in a certain way. And the symmetry of that nesting of electric domains in the plasma to make life is the subject of what we deal with tomorrow. And it relates directly to what we're going to talk about in terms of hydrogen in just a moment. So what I wanted to share with you was a little bit about the physics of how plasma domains work. Now, many of you know that you can derive the Sri Yantra as archetype from nine three-dimensional interdigitated golden ratio tetrahedra. Do you see that? I've got nine three-dimensional tetrahedra on the top right. And if I interdigitate them properly in 3D, the shadow is called the three Sri Yantra. In effect, what I have is nine opposing pairs of cones. I repeat, nine opposing pairs of cones. And that creates uh, the physics of how plasma would create self-organization. Now, there's this fun movie, it's called <clears throat> The Last Mimsy. And the kids learn that by using the Sri Yantra, they can control the stars. They can control the energy grid. They can control life. And the companion movie I recommend is called Whale Dreamers, uh, funded by John Lennon's son. And the Whale Dreamers is referring in part to this plasma storm that hits South Australia off the bite every 6,000 or so years. And the Los Alamos physics group spent years modeling what that plasma storm looked like. And I mention this because it's an instructive lesson on the nature of life. That Los Alamos Plasma Physics Laboratory, a large number of their staff devoted many years to this study, and they concluded that the geometry of that plasma had nine nested donuts, one above each other. And they concluded from the computer modeling that the way plasma would self-organize requires actually nine donuts nested. In exactly the same way as you have seven plus two chakras and the nine steps to Palenque and the nine roofs of the pagoda and the Egyptian Ennead and the Greek Ennead and the Dante's Inferno and the Enneagram of Gurdjieff, etc., 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 etc. So the nine is very significant because it is the physics of plasma. Now, after they finished doing all this physics at Los Alamos, they walked out of their parking lot and they found that the computer model they just did of the shape of the donuts in the plasma storm had been carved by the Native American Indians on the petroglyphs in their parking lot about a thousand years earlier. So apparently they had done some plasma physics earlier. <laughs> and so they realized that the tribal shaman all over the world had seen this plasma storm and they had carved it on their petroglyphs. Now this story might carry us a little bit here, but I, I want to pursue it just a, a moment. A friend of mine named John McGovern in Flinders Range in Adelaide, uh, near the Bight in Australia, was working with the Adnamatna Indian tribe and had discovered all these carvings on the cave walls of the aboriginals, the Adnamatna tribe, which showed the Ophanum alphabet and the Seraphim alphabet and Hebrew alphabet letters and the symbol for their uh, Valnapa, a Dawi, was actually 
as Pulfanum, the symbol was actually the symbol for gold and mean. It was carved on these ancient cave walls. And after, to make a long story short, John McGovern became an expert on ancient Indian, ancient indigenous petroglyph carvings. And, it, and after a while, he believed he could interpret and read every ancient petroglyph carving symbol system on Earth. He can interpret most any carving there is. And he calls the alphabet letters on those carvings, he calls them plasma residues. The shadow of an electric field, which is how a shaman penetrates into a plasma storm, a tornado. And now this all sounds a bit romantic, but it's now John McGovern is the co-author of hundreds of papers on plasma physics with the Los Alamos research team for this reason. They even found that they could determine which tribe had painted these petroglyphs by the latitude, uh, by the, they could determine the latitude of the shaman who made the carving by how high up on the neck was the plasma donut. So clearly, the shaman are saying, you know, Vishnu, Shiva, however you want to call God, call it, call it Vishnu, lives in this wave envelope. And this is the plasma coming from the sun. This is what the whale dreamers needed to dream in order to not just call the whales, but project their plasma into the solar wind and inhabit the stars, as in the physics of embedding. Now, that's a little bit advanced material. You didn't know you were going to hear that in a class on hydrogen, did you? <laughs> the reason I brought that up was to give you an idea of how it is that plasma fields can fuse and embed into larger star systems. If you look from a scene from the movie Last Mimsy, you see this, this double um, spider's web vortex cone pair there. And you see that they're studying how it is to project plasma in order to create power. At one point in the film, you see that when they use the Sri Yantra, they, they actually, the, the public utility power grid switches out. They actually create a plasma storm locally. So, the point is that if you nest these phase conjugate pairs of opposing cones correctly, uh, collectively the plasma domains or donuts assemble themselves into a living body. It's literally the physics of what we call politics. A politic comes from the Greek word the body polis, which means if you have a body that is projected, projecting plasma, you have a polis. And again, this is more intro to tomorrow, what we're going to talk about, about how living biologic plasma becomes alive. But in this sense, you obviously cannot be political <laughs> unless you have some plasma to project. In other words, no bliss, no politics. In other words, somebody forgot to tell George Bush that the purpose of having a government was so that people could experience bliss, because that's how your plasma gets projected. <laughs> So all of this is about learning how biologic plasma becomes self-organized. And the symmetry lessons that are contained are what this is about. So I wanted to mention that because this is what's behind our study of hydrogen. Hydrogen, as we discussed before, remember, you've had two lectures now looking at the symmetry of the heart of hydrogen. Remember. Um, Many of you are familiar with the what's called the Anu, the Anu from uh, Theosophy, Leadbeater and Vassant. Do you remember what the symmetry of the Anu is? That if you look at, let's look at what makes a tornado self-organizing and see if we can understand what lives at the heart of hydrogen and that'll give us an introductory lesson to our lesson about the electricity of hydrogen and how we make that for ourselves that if you look at the center of a tornado forming, and we've done this many times, the center of this tornado, this happens to be Katrina, the center of this tornado, which is sort of what's at the heart of hydrogen, if we believe in a scene tomorrow, that at the heart of atoms is a black hole. The tornado vortex at its heart has a pentagram, a five-sided figure. There's a reason the pentagram has a five-sided plasma at the center, because that's phase conjugate and implosive and what causes a centripetal force that makes the tornado able to steer itself. When a shaman steers a tornado, he embeds his plasma, his own bioplasmic streamers, into the tornado. He feels the pain of the tornado with using 